What's up, New Hope family? Welcome to New Hope here. Welcome to the lobby. My name is David. I am the host of the lobby and the online campus director. I'm here with my friend, Michael Beers. Hey, everyone. And my other friend, Hattie, Hello. is on producer cam today. We're so excited that you're here. Uh, I'm a little less like, happy to be outside than the last couple times we've recorded because it's mosquito land right now in yep. Williston. But we're in a baseball stadium, so I'm. it balances out <laughs> to joy. You can handle a little, yeah. a little bit of mosquitoes. It balances out to joy. <laughs> I do. Baseball is actually my favorite sport. I did not know, know that. Uh, so I do enjoy a good baseball field. But it's very humid. It is humid today. And the mosquitoes in Williston are at an all-time high. It's lovely out, you guys. Um, sure. It's the beautiful. breeze that was coming through a minute ago was pretty yeah, great. <clears throat> that breeze did feel good. If I'm, you hear I'm guessing it'll come back. Really loud noise. Just stick with us. <laughs> They're working on the field, getting it all ready for games and things. So, but we're very excited that you're here. Yes. Uh, our take a hike series is going to continue. So we're gonna. That's why we're outside, right? We felt like we needed to Pretty be much. outside for the lobby. Mm -hmm. Yep. Definitely. <clears throat> I think next time though, we should actually hike during the lobby. Interesting. To see if we're as in shape as Pastor Mike was. <laughs> Can yeah, we right. do... It'll just be 10 minutes of us breathing heavily. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the lobby. <laughs> David, we just started. I know. <laughs> I'm gassed. Uh, we are at uh, Offutt Stadium. I think that it's Ardeen Offutt yeah. Stadium is the full name, <clears throat> which is a ridiculously beautiful it's baseball really stadium cool. for just like a community field. Mm -hmm. uh, the high school team plays here. The Legion team plays here. Yep. That truck drives by really loudly here. <laughs> uh, I believe the, the college, junior college team plays here sometimes as well. Not all the time, but okay. sometimes. Um, so yeah, it's it's very cool. You can't see it right now, but you have to take our word for it. Hattie, isn't it cool? My, you know, you're talking about all the teams that play here. That I'm thinking- a, That was a yes or no What question. kind of yeah. snacks do they have here? <laughs> like that's more what, where the I was The concessions are all right. They're not bad. Okay. I, they do like a steak feed night every oh, okay. year for the Legion team, and those are pretty good. Okay, yeah. we like the, it. The town I grew up in, <clears throat> uh, is a, it's a football town. Or I should rephrase, I did not grow up there, but I moved there in 10th grade and did a couple years of high school there before college. And But every single football night, they do pork chops, and they're like, it's a small little town. Yeah. It's a football powerhouse though, but they're known, not just around the state, like around the region for these pork chops. Wow. They're unbelievable. They sell out by halftime. That's crazy. So let's go there. And yeah, we should definitely go to a football game there. I don't really, I mean, you know, I love some of those football coaches. They coached me in other sports, but <laughs> I just want a pork chop. I don't really care Sounds great. what's happening <laughs> on the field. <laughs> That's the a thing. People go to the game, pay admissions to get in, get a pork chop and leave. Brilliant. Oh, they don't even stay and watch the I game. I mean, most people stay, but. I have known people that have done that. That's one of them may have been me <laughs> when I was home from college once. I was like, I don't, I don't know any of these kids anymore. Mm -hmm. I just want a pork chop. Not normal like ballpark fare though, pork chop. No. Yeah. I think, your... I think more like hot dog. <clears throat> right. Hot, classic hot dog. Yeah. yeah. There's, a, there's a famous quote, I can't remember who it's by right now, but it, it says, uh, a hot dog at the ballpark is better than a steak at the Ritz Carlton. Mm -hmm. And I think that, Did you just make No, that it's like a, some famous guy from New York. I think it was at the okay. Ritz or some famous restaurant hmm. or something in New York City. No, it's an old timey quote. And I believe it's accurate. I would much yeah. rather be at a ballpark eating a hot dog. It's been a long time since <clears throat> I've been at a ballpark to eat a hot dog. That's too bad. Uh, it makes me a little sad yeah. now that I think about it. So is this a part of the lobby where they walk out with hot dogs for <laughs> yeah. each of us? So here come the concessions <laughs> workers from Moffitt Stadium. Did you arrange that, <clears throat> David? I I probably should have tried. Yep. I didn't even I didn't even think about it. Shoot. Seems that important. Was a shame. Uh, do you have a favorite baseball team, Michael? Not. No, not wow. really. I, that's, that's great, Michael. Thank you for that. <laughs> Hattie, Sorry. In Michael's team? defense, he doesn't pick favorites of anything. <laughs> that's, that's right. There. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. I. Um, this might surprise you guys, but I do not have a favorite baseball what? team. <laughs> Um, what Hattie and Michael meant to say is the Minnesota Twins. I, sure. They're if our I, favorite team. If I were to follow a team, it would be the Twins. I'll take it. I'll accept I, that. I used to like them oh. back when like Joe Maurer played, and I didn't follow them regularly. Sure. But I, I love the Twins. They're yeah. my favorite professional sports team. Yeah, that's good. Lots of memories of growing up going to games <clears> with my dad. I yeah. grew up. I mean, we were 25 minutes from the Metrodome, that, that just on the too. other side of St. Paul. So. Yeah, it was nice I, to be like, come home from school. And Dad's like, you want to go to the Twins game tonight? Yeah. I mean, yes. that sounds really I cool. I might have yes, been 
<clears throat> more inclined to be be a baseball fan if I would have lived sure. closer to a yeah. That's one thing I, I worry stadium. about living here with my son. I'm like, so many of my memories with my dad are tied to going to Twins games and stuff. Not, I mean, you'll have to come we'll watch have plenty of memories. You'll have to come watch the Keybirds. We have come. And, okay. No, we, we came and watched the high school team. The high school. Okay. I mean, I go Keybirds, that's fine. But I passionately support the Coyotes. Sure. <clears throat> Go, Some of them are your best Coyotes, ball players. Right. Some and they most of them, you know, they play keyboards if yeah. they play. The keyboards are the Legion team. <clears throat> but <laughs> yeah, in fact, we're sitting <clears throat> this is a pretty cool this is a ridiculously cool stadium. And a lot of the people that have like sponsored and stuff, they all get bricks. Mm-hmm. And I see uh, David and Kirsten Hill all over the place. And I coached their son in basketball. Uh, they've become friends of mine. Pretty yeah. cool. They are, I think they're kind of uh, distracting a little Patty bit. Patty and Michael should give me them. money so I can get a brick. Oh, oh sure. Yeah. Sure, sure. Great. So the next oh, time we record the lobby, we here. could do a New Hope here yeah. brick if enough we get enough sponsors. Yeah, that's. <laughs> we're probably not going to spend our money on that, but you never know. <laughs> There's a tennis court behind Hattie let's, that they can probably see. Let's add a drop-down menu and <laughs> we, <laughs> to buy along New Hope with, here a brick. Along with our trip to Hawaii, we'll just you yeah. guys can <clears throat> sponsor a brick here yeah. at. I think we have a few trips that we have talked about we want <laughs> yeah. sponsored. The, the list is getting Hawaii. pretty long, yeah. <clears throat> so we'll see. I'll put the bricks at the bottom I don't know if the, the drop-down menu can keep up. <laughs> but uh, I would love to hear everyone's favorite, like, ballpark food, snack, mm. whatever. Oh, yeah. So I want to hear it in the chat. I want to hear from you guys. My, it's probably just a hot dog for me. Uh, the problem is Target Field, where the Twins play now, has such crazy good food. Yeah. Like, like it'd like be good eat, food anywhere. Yeah. But I usually still end up getting at least like a brat or something sure. like that. So a brat would probably be my answer. Uh, going to a baseball game, probably a hot dog. But yeah. like overall, <laughs> in a stadium, I love eating popcorn. And so where do you not like eating popcorn? Uh, in the shower. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, that, I mean, <laughs> that does sound like a terrible place to eat popcorn. That would be the worst popcorn. spot to eat <laughs> yeah. popcorn, Michael. I don't know. I mean, if you have it in like a safe area, but still, I think it's with wet. a towel, so you okay. dry off your hand, <laughs> grab some popcorn, I, eat it, and then I just like eating popcorn, so that's too much work. That's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Patty, favorite <laughs> ballpark fare? I'm gonna <laughs> also say a hot dog. I'm not a big hot dog eater, but if you go to a baseball game, you have to have a hot yeah. dog. Yeah. It, a hot dog tastes better with a baseball game behind it. Yeah. It's just, yep. it's a scientific Definitely. fact. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, but put in the, how much time do we have left? Oh, the um, we have, it's, we're at seven minutes and okay. 30 seconds. Okay. So we got a couple minutes left, but post in the chat right now, favorite ballpark food. What are other ballpark or, foods? Or well, you got like Cracker Jacks. Okay. Uh, peanuts. That's popcorn, right? Yeah, they're in the song, buy me some peanuts and so Cracker what if, Jacks. So what if there's like, you know, the <laughs> iconic food at the stadium, like People travel to go sure. to go get that. Yeah. Should we list that food and what stadium too? Sure. <laughs> I'm just curious <laughs> where the best foods at. Yeah. Well, so like I loved the Dome Dog in the Metrodome. Yeah. It was like this huge, yep. ridiculous. I hot had dog one of those. I'm getting that. one of those when yeah. we go there. Um, the Metrodome doesn't exist anymore. But oh yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I knew that. There are other hot dogs at places. Yeah. No. That. I, a lot of ballparks these days have like yeah like a signature food item and yeah <clears throat> some places that still is like a hot like a dodger dog well, that's true or yeah. a fenway frank but some places it's something totally but different. is it all just the same hot dogs but they just come up no, with like a cool a, name a fenway, for it. a fenway frank is like a really long skinny hot dog i've had a dodger dog because when we lived in oklahoma city their triple a team plays they have a they're in oklahoma city and they okay. had Dodger dogs. There. These yeah. names are called. cracking me up. If I could have another you job, you gotta have alliteration. It would be I'm I'm starting to learn that pastors and baseball teams are very similar. <laughs> they love alliteration. <laughs> Things all have to start with the same letter. Dodger dog. What would the New Hope hot dog be called? Ooh, good <clears throat> question. We also want to hear that in the yeah. chat. What your Post ideas? Post in the chat. What what the New Hope signature <laughs> hot dog should be, and maybe if it's we start like a softball team. I have an idea. Yes. It's the blue one. I don't want to I don't eat want a, a blue, blue hot dog. dog. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe but, snow cone. I, I like hey, that. Hey, thanks for bringing up the app. You guys should all download the app if you don't have it. Hey, Hattie, what color is it? It is the blue one. We haven't done that in way too long. It's been a while. And I'm ashamed. Okay. I think that's okay. That's that was Hattie's that's favorite. everyone has the app, right? That's true. You guys have all downloaded <laughs> the app. But if you haven't, you can find it on the App Store or the Google Play Store. Make sure you download that. I hope you can hear me over the drilling it and the trucks driving by. We tried to leave but our church because of noise. The, the noise. <laughs> Yeah, if we were in our studio, the same noise would be happening. So I don't know. That's, this is the best we could do. That's true. So it's probably better to be out here with baseballs. Yeah. And yeah. But what is our hot dog going to be called? Not the blue one. 
<laughs> Maybe that's it, not the blue one. That could, yeah. I mean, New Hope hot dog. I mean, it's H mm. followed by an H. It's, it's not cooler. terrible. <clears throat> well, they, that, we're going to need help. We, we need, need you guys to let us know in the chat. Hot dog. <laughs> name our hot dog. That means we're going to then have to have a hot dog. I think so. <clears throat> but we can work that's on fine. that. We can work on that. Maybe that instead of root beer floats. Yeah. Great yeah. idea. <laughs> a named hot dog for New Hope. This is fantastic. We could name a root beer today. float too, though. I mean, uh, we could. Yeah. Nah. <clears throat> Man, the New Hope doesn't a root beer float. <laughs> got New Hope float. That root sounds really good, actually. But what? What about the hot dog, though? <laughs> <laughs> we forgot about the hot dog. We all said that was our I, favorite. Food. Okay. Somehow this lobby episode has derailed more than our normal lobby episode. We're episodes, going past our time. But, uh, oh no. <laughs> We have a great service. I promise we have a really great service. We actually we actually really do. We really yeah. do. It's Pastor Mike wraps up uh, the Take a Hike series really well, mm -hmm. um, preaches on Revelation, it's, it, but a different perspective than I think a lot of us think of when yep. we think of Revelation. So that's going to be really cool, um, finishing out the series. We have some great worship. We're so excited that you're here with us. Hattie, thank you for uh, being whatever whatever this was. Thank you for producing it. Michael, thank you for being here. Uh, and we love all of you. Thank you for being here with us. We'll see you in just a minute. Well, hey, church, we are so excited that you've joined us at New Hope here yes. today. And it, Michael, it's the last week of a series. It's sad. It's Michael's it's, sad week. It's a sad week. Yep. Anytime we finish a series, Michael gets so sad. We'll comfort you a little bit later on. I'm so sad for you. I appreciate it. Um, and I'm, I'm sad too. It's been a fun series. It has been. We've yeah. got to see Pastor Mike wandering through the wilderness. We got to go film it in a we did. beautiful place. It was fun was, to make. It's pretty fun. And we were very impressed with Pastor Mike not getting winded was while true. <laughs> preaching and walking. Was, I think we were more tired than he was. Potentially. We had to walk backwards though yeah. in our defense. Yeah. But it was very impressive. <laughs> and it's been a super cool series. And we think you've enjoyed it as well. So we have our last week of Take a Hike. Uh, and we're just so excited that you're here with us today. Yeah. So right now we're going to worship together. So let's do that.
Well, hey, New Hope here. We are so excited once again that you joined us today. And we're going to get to the last the last message in our Take a Hike series. I heard Michael's really sad. Michael's, as always, yeah. as always. Yeah, during worship, you know, we gave him a hug and told him it's going to be okay. He'll love the next series, too. Oh, good. Yes. He'll love the next series, too. Um, but before we get to that, we just want to touch on a couple things. And the first thing is our Connect card. And we really want to encourage you to, to fill that out. If you have any questions about the church, if you're just looking for more information, mm -hmm. looking to get connected, anything like that. And also, if you have any prayer requests, fill out that Connect card and let us know how we can be praying for you during the week. And in just a minute, Pastor Mike is going to teach for us. Yep. And during that time, if you have kids that are joining with you today, yeah. we just want to let you know we have a service that's just for it's them. It's fantastic. It's so good. Yep. Pastor Andrea and I think guest star this yeah. month, yep. Rachel will be joining. And uh, they just put together something really awesome for your kids. So preschool age to elementary, uh, grab a second device and they have something for them. Yeah. And uh, I want to real quick say uh, we are so excited about the new gatherings mm -hmm. that are getting started. Cool. Our new, We have three new Hope Here gatherings in the last two weeks and we're so excited That's about amazing. it. That's uh, amazing. Yes, it's incredible. We're so excited about what God's doing and, and how people are listening and answering mm -hmm. that call that the Holy Spirit's putting on them. And, and we want to encourage you, if maybe God's been talking to you, uh, that we would just love to have that conversation with you about what it, what it looks like to host a gathering, what yeah. that means. And I also want to encourage those of you who have are in that process of starting your gathering because not only are we all praying for you here at New Hope, mm -hmm. but our friends at our, our church, our, our friends at New Life, uh, they're, they're I talked to them this week and they're so excited about your gatherings. Cool. They, they're praying for you by name as well. And so there's lots of prayers going out for you. And, and those of you who might be thinking about a gathering, there's a link in the chat. You can click that, uh, fill out that short form or just put it on your connect card as well. And we'd love to talk to you about it. Um, we also want to encourage you to uh, continue in worship by the giving of God's tithes and our offerings and all the ways that we're able to reach our communities. Th those only happen because of your faithful giving to New Hope. And so we want to thank those of you who've been giving and encourage uh, those of you that haven't been to, to consider giving that, that tithe, that first tithe of 10%. And if you're interested in doing that, there's a link in the chat and you can see on the screen all the different ways as well. And uh, we just want to take a moment and pray for you mm -hmm. guys. Wherever you're joining us from, we love to be able to pray for you and also to know 
specifically how we can be yep. praying for you. There's a few ways to let us know. If you're joining us for our, through our church online platform, uh, click that button and someone would love to yes. pray with you right now. Yep. You can also mark it on your Connect card like David was talking about and we'll pray for that uh, during this week. But also we just wanna take a moment and pray together mm -hmm. in this moment. So let's pray. Uh, God, uh, we're so thankful for all of the people who join us every single week. We're thankful for our church family and, and how you just meet us here as we worship and praise you, Lord. And uh, we just praise you for how you are growing New Hope here and uh, how you're growing this community and, and laying it on the hearts of people to step into something new, to take that important step to just reach more people who don't know you. And so, Lord, we, we continue to pray for them. We pray for boldness and courage for them as they uh, take this uh, big step, Lord, and we pray that that would continue to increase. Uh, we know that there's people listening right now that uh, you have spoken to them, and I pray that uh, you would just help them to be bold and courageous in how you're speaking to them, Lord, and uh, not just for gatherings, but for whatever next step you have for each of us, because we know uh, that you always want us to be growing in our relationship with you and to take that next step. And so wherever that is for each of us today, Lord, would you just speak that to us uh, and help us to, to overcome whatever fear might come in our way uh, so that can, we can just draw closer to you and in, in, in a deeper relationship with you, Lord. So uh, we pray that today, God, knowing that we can only do things uh, with your power and with your strength and not on our own accord. So we pray that um, just over every person who's joining us today, Father, and for all of the specific prayer requests that are coming in right now, uh, we just pray over those, God, and we pray that you're working and we know that you are uh, in, in such a unique way for each situation. And Lord, we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, welcome to the last week of our series we've called Take a Hike, where we've gone off the map to experience and really learn to choose something that a majority of people today just don't choose, optimism. Now, we aren't talking about the power of positive thinking and, and choosing positive things. Those things are important. We're talking about what the Bible says about how we as followers of Jesus view the world. That's optimism. And we started, we started our entire series out talking about the traps that we often get caught in that cause us to be pessimistic, like what we call the crisis du jour, you know, the crisis of the day, or 2200 thinking, looking at our past through a lens that's not always accurate. But I think there's a third big trap. It's a third big trap that maybe you've never thought of. And it actually is often found when we study one book of the Bible. There's one book of the Bible that has trapped more people in pessimism than ever before. Now, as we'll discover, it's not the book of the Bible's fault. It's the way we approach it. Some of you I know will be excited about this because you've been wanting me to teach on this book. And what, here's what we're going to do today. We're going to walk through an entire book of the Bible. It's going to be a journey. It's going to take us a few minutes. So I'm going to find a place to sit down so that we can walk through this together while you grab your Bible, because I really want you to have your Bible and get ready to take some notes and mark it up. You say, what book of the Bible is it? The very last book of the Bible. It's the book of Revelation. So grab your Bible and let's dive in as soon as I find a place to sit. All right, you ready for the book of Revelation? It's interesting, this book of the Bible, the last book of the Bible, is the most often read book of the Bible by people inside the church and outside the church. Because so many people are, let's just face it, curious, because it's a book of prophecy. It's a book that gives us pictures of the future. And it tells us that right up front. First verse, Revelation 1, says, The revelation from Jesus Christ, underline that second word, we're going to come back to it which God gave him to show his servants what must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to a servant, John, who testifies to everything he saw. John was one of, one of the disciples, but this was years after Jesus' death and resurrection and ascension. 
who testifies to everything he saw, that is the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Verse three, blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy and blessed are those who hear it and take to heart what is written in it because the time is near. Now we need to get one thing settled right up front. And that's why I had you underline that second word. This is the book of Revelation. I put in your notes. It's not the book of Revelations, plural. It's the book of Revelation, singular. And that little thing has tripped up so many people and caused this book to be misused, mistaught, and misunderstood. And it's, and because here's what's happened. So many people read it or have been taught to read it that believe that somehow it, it contains a series of riddles or mathematical formulas or pictures that we have to somehow sit with a calendar or a newspaper or the headlines or a calculator and somehow decode that we need scholars to tell us what this really means and when this will really happen and how bad it will really get. You ever think about what that produces? When we read this book, trying to understand riddles and hidden messages about how bad things will be, what does it cultivate in your heart? It cultivates pessimism and fear. And neither one of those things are products of the kingdom of God. We've talked about that the last two weeks. And so many people read this book thinking, oh, if I read this book and then, you know, I'll kind of keep, you know, um, uh, the news open on my tablet next to it, and I'll go, okay, here's what it says. I wonder if that's what it is. I wonder, I wonder if the end times, I wonder if it's really getting that bad now. And they kind of go back and forth, and it causes us to read headlines and, and view the news in a negative sense and with fear. And, and here's, as if that isn't bad enough, here's the big thing that has really messed up so many Christians is when we read Revelation thinking that it's you know, some kind of riddle or things that we need to understand or codes to how bad things are going to get, and we start getting scared and pessimistic, it actually decreases our credibility with the rest of the world. A world that needs to know Jesus. And all they hear us doing and saying is saying, well, that leader, that must be the Antichrist, or that's going to happen, that's going to, that's going to, you know, bring on the end times. And they go, what are you talking about? And then when we predict something or we connect something and it actually isn't true, what does that do for our credibility? So when we start telling people they need Jesus, they're like, you were wrong about all of that. Then you can't be right about Jesus. It messes with us. See, it's not the book of Revelations. It's the book of Revelation. See, we need to understand, this is in your notes, what the focus of the book is. And here's the focus of the book. It reveals Jesus Christ in all of his glory as Savior, as the forgiver of our sins, judge, and coming king. That's the focus of the book. And it tells us that. Go back and read the first three verses we just read. It reveals Jesus Christ in all of his glory as our Savior, as the one who is the hope of the world, as the judge, the one who will ultimately take care of sin and the coming king who will restore everything. That's the focus of this book. Now let's talk about the why of this book. What's the purpose of this book? And I, I want you to go back to those first three verses and underline the word blessed. It's there a couple times. And then underline the phrase, take heart. And that gives us a clue as to the purpose. And, and the purpose is kind of threefold. First purpose is to give us hope. Not to make us scared. It's to give us hope. Because it says life will be hard. And in fact, before Jesus comes back, it'll be incredibly hard. And it's clear talking about events that life will be hard. But it always points to the fact that even though it may be hard, don't despair. Jesus is coming. And even more than that, Jesus is at work. You aren't alone. You aren't abandoned. So stay focused. Hang on to hope. Second purpose of this book is to equip Christians, to equip all Christians. 
The Bible makes this clear. Paul wrote in 2 Timothy, it says, all scripture, that includes the book of Revelation, all scripture is God-breathed. In other words, God is in all of it. None of it's a mistake. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness and how to be followers of Jesus and have, the, have life to the full like Jesus promised. Listen to how he ends it. So that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped. Thoroughly equipped for what? For how to build our survival shelter in the backyard for when the end times come. No, that's not what it's saying. Thoroughly equipped for every good work. The book of Revelation is designed to equip you to bring hope to a lost world, to introduce a lost world to Jesus. Uh, and the first couple of chapters actually give us letters to churches and tells the churches how to be and how not to be the church. It's to equip them. And here's, here's the third reason. So the first purpose is to give hope. Second is to equip all, Christ, all Christians. The third one is to provide a roadmap for those alive when Jesus is ready to return. What's the key word there? Alive. Alive. This is the purpose of this book is not to give us a roadmap thousands of years before he may return or even even months or years before he returns. But so that we recognize that he's about ready to come. It's to give us a roadmap. See, here's, here's one of the things, and if, maybe you've heard me talk about this, and we're going to talk about this a little bit more on the, on the podcast this week. But if we go back to the prophecies, and there's several hundred of them that refer to the first coming of Jesus when he came 2,000 years ago. That was Christmas. When he died for our sins, that was Easter. When, or that's Good Friday. And when he came back out of the grave, that's, that's Easter. And then he ascended into heaven. And then he started the church by sending his Holy Spirit. That's the Pentecost. There are all these prophecies, hundreds, thousands of years before, that predicted all of those things. And scholars did what a lot of us do. They studied these, looking for the secret clues and trying to calculate everything and figure everything out. And guess who missed it when Jesus actually came? It was the scholars. Why did they miss it? Because see, they read this and they said, here's how it's supposed to look. Here's how he's supposed to come. They interpreted the prophecies based on their present instead of just reading them and then recognizing them when they're actually fulfilled, when they actually happen. Jesus talked about that a little bit, and we'll get to it here, here in, in a few minutes. But one of the things we need to understand as we walk through this is that when things talked about talked about in this book happen, we won't need scholars to explain them to us. See, the reason we read this book is not to get a roadmap before, before it happens, but so we recognize it when it happens. We don't need somebody standing up and saying, here's exactly how it's going to happen. That actually may cause us to misunderstand it. This was a book, all of the books in the Bible, are written by ordinary people inspired, God-breathed by God, to be read by ordinary people. And certainly there's cool stuff that God put in there that when we dig deep and get in there, there's always something for us to learn, which is why we learn things from scholars, but that doesn't mean you can't learn it. It's an ordinary book inspired by an extraordinary God to be read by ordinary people. And I love this book of the Bible. I love the book of Revelation because it gives me hope, because it helps me grow in my faith. It equips me. And if I happen to be alive when Jesus is ready to come back because I've read the book of Revelation, I'll know it and I'll be ready. Remember, and this is in your notes, the book of Revelation is about deepening our hope in Jesus. It's about deepening our hope in Jesus. It's not about causing fear or pessimism. If, 
if you are listening to teaching or you're reading the book of Revelation and it's producing fear and pessimism, and I don't mean this condemning, I mean this to be helpful, you're reading it wrong. You're reading it wrong. And I want to help us today and how to read it to produce hope. So I'm going to walk us through this real quick. And we're going to talk about a few things. First thing we need to understand is that the book of Revelation is not a unique book. It's just a different book. See, unique means it's one of a kind. And there are other books of prophecy, and there's other passages of prophecy in in the Bible. There's books like Isaiah, Daniel, Ezekiel, Micah, Zechariah. Jesus talked about prophecy, and he said, be very careful how you read prophecy. Stop trying to figure it all out before it happens. It's what I just referred to a couple minutes ago. In John 5, he says, you study the scriptures diligently because you think that in them you have eternal life. In other words, you think if you just understand it all now, you'll understand how everything is going to happen. These are the very scriptures that testify about me. In other words, you tried so hard to figure the prophecy out and to figure out how it was going to happen before it happened, you missed me. You missed me. Yet you refused to come to me and have life. 1 Peter 10 makes it clear that the prophecies were written not for, for us to understand before they happen, but for those who read the prophecies and saw them fulfilled to have hope. So it's not a unique book. It's just a different book. Second thing we need to know is we are in the last days. Say, wow, okay, so maybe I need to read it. Listen, but Jesus might not return for a long time. Look back at the first verse. We already read it. Verse 1 of chapter 1. The revelation from Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants. What must, what's the next verse? Soon, underline it, soon take place. When was that written? Almost 2,000 years ago. You say, soon, soon. What do they mean by soon? See, when we read that, we think of our current context. And it might be soon, but it might not. See, the Bible helps us understand what the last days are. The last days, this is your notes, began 2,000 years ago. It's like 2,000 years ago, after the death, the resurrection, the the ascension of Jesus, and Pentecost, the beginning of the church. It's like God hit start on the stopwatch, and the countdown began. The last days are beginning. Now, he never said how long the last days are, and anyone who tells you they know how long is is not telling the truth, because the Bible makes it clear. Look at Acts chapter 2. At the first day of the church, the day of Pentecost, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on, on all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Hebrews chapter 1 says, but in these last days, you catch this? In these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. How do we know it's the last days? Because Jesus came and now he's speaking to us. James 5.3 uses the same term. It says, your gold and silver are corroded. Their corrosion will testify against you and eat your flesh like fire. You've hoarded wealth in the last days. Here's another one, John chapter 2. Dear children, this is the last hour. And as you've heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come. This is how we know it's the last hour. It's just part of why we need to be careful careful saying, okay, we know exactly how this is going to be fulfilled. We'll know it when we see it. We'll know it when we see it. And we need, and and the Bible says, Jesus just said, there will be others who will look like the Antichrist, but there will be one and it will be obvious and it will be obvious. The last days began 2000 years ago. Second, remember God's calendar doesn't match our calendar and it never has never has. Listen to what the Bible says. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. Now, a lot of people have read that, and and they started to do the math. Okay, if a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day, and then they start to do the math. All right, then we know when Jesus is coming. No, he said it's like. He didn't say it's exactly. He says his calendar is different than ours, and it's never matched ours. He goes on, he said, The Lord's not slow in keeping his promise. In other words, when the Bible says soon, and it's been 2,000 years, it's not because God is slow. It's because God's calendar is different. Instead, he is patient with you, 
And he's telling us why he's taking so long, it feels like. Not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. In other words, you can't predict it. The heavens will disappear with a roar, and the elements will be destroyed by fire, and the earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. Why does it feel like God is taking so long? Because he wants you and me and our friends and our family to know Jesus. That matters to him more than anything else. See, when we say, I wonder if he's coming, I wonder if he's coming, be grateful he hasn't come yet because it means your friends and your family who don't know Jesus still have time. Here's another thing to help us understand the last days. When the Bible says no one knows the day and the hour, it actually means no one knows the day or the hour. Listen to what Jesus said. He said, but about that day or hour, no one knows. Not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son. You catch that? But only the Father. I don't know how that works. When I get to heaven, I'm going to ask that because the Bible tells us God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, one God, not three gods. He's in perfect relationship within himself. So that's how it's expressed in three parts. So how can one part of him, you know, God keep a secret from another part of him? I don't know how that works, but I know the Bible tells me it's true. Even Jesus doesn't know when he's coming back. That's for the Father to know. See, when you read this book, know that we're in the last days. The Bible makes that clear. But Jesus might not return for a long time. Might return today. We don't know. Third thing we need to know to read the book of Revelation, right? There's nothing we can do to hurry or hold back these events. And I've heard so many people, and it produces guilt and fear, say, you know what? If if we let this law pass or if we let this thing happen in our society, then, you know, it's just going to hurry up the last days. So we, if we fight against it, we can hold it back. And certainly we have a responsibility. We have a fa- responsibility. We have a very real enemy of our souls and we're in a very real spiritual battle and we need to fight sin. We need to fight for what's right. We need to fight for the opportunity to introduce other people to Jesus. But nothing that we do is hurrying or holding back the coming of Jesus. The Bible makes it clear that date's already scheduled. And I've heard people say, well, we just need to, you know, get the gospel to every country so we can hurry up and get Jesus to come back. No, the Bible says that will be one of the things that will tell you the time is closer. But us hurrying doesn't, hurrying that up doesn't change God's timetable. He knows how long it's going to take. And finally, we need to understand the core hope. The core hope that this book cultivates is the restoration of all things and the return of Jesus. And I've said it before, I'm going to say it again. If you read the book of Revelation and you find yourself getting pessimistic, you find yourself getting cynical, you find yourself getting afraid, you find yourself getting scared, you're not reading it the way that God intended for you to read it. The focus of this book is the revealing of Jesus. The core hope of this book is the restoration of all things. In other words, sin, hell, and the grave, temptation will be done away with. Even in beautiful creation I'm sitting in right now, it has its flaws and there's parts of it that hurt and are dangerous. I mean, there's cactus around me and who knows what's in some of these holes around me, you know, if they're going to come out and get me. Someday it'll all be restored. And what's gorgeous and beautiful now, we'll look back and say, yeah, that wasn't even like a reflection. That was like a fuzzy picture of the real thing. And all things will be restored. You'll be restored if you're a follower of Jesus. And Jesus will come back. Listen to the words of Titus in the New Testament. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. In other words, The whole purpose of this is for us to know Jesus and to be forgiven of sins and to be with him. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions. It's about equipping us. We've talked about that. And to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives 
not fearful lives, not cynical lives, not lives hiding out in the basement thinking the end has come, not angry lives at our government because it's making decisions that are bringing about the end times. We wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus. Listen, if you're a follower of Jesus, and I hope you are, then this book should be one of the best books we read in all of the Bible. It should give you hope. It should, it should be part of what equips you. And it should deepen your faith. And just know, it gives you a roadmap in case you and I are alive when Jesus is ready to come back. But we need to read it rightly. And if you aren't a follower of Jesus, I want to encourage you. Read this book. To know what's promised, what's coming. And to know that the reason Jesus hasn't come back yet, one of the reasons is he's waiting for you. He's hoping that you'll trust your life to him. Because he designed you for a purpose. He designed you to live a hopeful life. Not a life pretending that everything is okay, but a life knowing that God is at work and eventually everything will be. So if you aren't a follower of Jesus yet, why not now? It begins with simply asking him, Jesus, would you forgive me of my sin? Because we all need that, right? That's why Jesus came and died on the cross, is to pay our sin debt. And then invite Jesus into your life to teach you to follow his leadership. You don't need to use my words. You can use your own words. Jesus, forgive me of my sin and come into my life and teach me. Hang on here in a few moments. Our team is going to come online, come back online, and if you decided to follow Jesus, they're going to talk to you about your next step because that's the first step in following Jesus. And if you already are a follower of Jesus, I want to encourage you this week. Pick up the book of Revelation and read it. Maybe for you, it'll be the first time with a right perspective. Let me pray for us. Father, thank you so much. Thank you so much for a book that was designed to give us hope, designed to solidify our faith, designed to help us understand how everything will eventually be restored and to remind us that you're at work even when we can't always see it. And God, I can't wait for the day that you restore all things. But as much as I want that, I want my friend, family members who don't know you to have time to discover you. And so I pray for them right now. I pray for our friends and New Hope family who may be watching who don't have a relationship with you, that maybe today would be the day and then they would know they're ready for the day when you come back. So in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hey, New Hope, as I said, hang on. Our lobby team is going to come. They're going to help you with your next steps and just encourage you in your faith. Have a great day. Well, we hope that you found today's message valuable and that it encourages you to take a next step. And Pastor Mike listed a, a few of those, but we're really hoping and praying that for some of you today, you take that first step to become a follower yeah. of Jesus, that you say, I'm a sinner and I need forgiveness and, and I want to make you my Lord and Savior. And for those of you who made that decision, we are so yes. excited for you. We're so happy for you. And as your new church family, we just want to come alongside you and give you some resources, be able to pray for you, ask, answer any questions you might have. And uh, if that's you today, please please click the link that's in the chat right now. Uh, like I said, we have some resources for you, or you can text NHH next step to 97000. There's a Bible reading plan on there, and then uh, just some other really important information that you can check out yeah. on there. So let us know. We want to be able to celebrate with you. Yeah, and another next step you can take today is check out our Grow podcast. Mm. It comes out on Spotify, uh, YouTube, and Apple Music, and it's a great way to go a little bit deeper into the message and, yeah. and grow deeper in your faith. And uh, Pastor Mike does such a great job. It's always so good. It's kind of like a a sweet spot of teaching and so we, we encourage you uh, check that out uh, sometime soon yeah it's good and I want to encourage you come back next week we are starting a brand new series it's called Acts More Than a Building so come back here 9 30 11 15 we can't wait to see you again